Hi guys, welcome to your second screencast on long-term adaptations and this time what we're going to be looking at is how long-term exercise can benefit our cardiorespiratory system. Now before we actually start talking about the adaptations that take place, just to remind you about the cardiorespiratory system. It's made up of your cardiovascular system and your respiratory system. So, cardiovascular system is to do with your blood, your heart and your blood vessels, okay, and how oxygen and nutrients are transported around to the tissue. Now the respiratory system it's all about the lungs and the airways and how we actually bring oxygen into the body and then distribute it to the muscles and so forth. So the long-term adaptations we need to be aware of are changes to your heart rate or your heart size, sorry, decreased risk of hypertension, increased vital capacity. These are the three that we're going to do in this screencast. Then the next screencast we're going to be looking at increased maximal oxygen uptake. Increased efficiency of oxygen delivery and waste product removal and increased lung efficiency and gaseous exchange. Okay, so we're going to start with changes to your heart rate now, or change to your heart, sorry, not heart rate. So during long term training, your heart increases in size and strength. Now, it's not your actual heart that increases in size or strength, it's the muscle wall. Okay, so if you're looking at these two hearts here, that's one that hasn't been through training. This is a heart that's potentially been through training. And as you can see, this muscle here is larger so this muscle has gone through hypertrophy and this is known as cardiac hypertrophy now what this means is it means that per beat we can force out more blood because the muscle is stronger so we're able to force out more blood per beat which has a positive impact on our stroke volume our heart rate and our cardiac output as well remember heart rate is how many times the heart beats per minute stroke volume is the amount of blood that leaves the heart per beat and cardiac output is the amount of blood that leaves the heart per minute. Now, if you think about it, the more blood that can be pumped out of um, the heart per beat means that more oxygen is getting to the working muscles and more carbon dioxide is being removed, which means you're going to be able to perform for longer at higher intensities. And the heart doesn't have to work as hard, which means you're going to reduce the risk of cardiac death. Okay, so heart failure, heart attacks, um, sudden cardiac death as well with that. Along with that, we've also get a decreased resting heart rate, and this is known as bradycardia. This is when the heart beat goes below 60 beats per minute. So with this kind of increase in strength and size of the heart, we also get a decreased resting heart rate and also an increased stroke volume. As I've said before, this means that more blood leaves the heart per beat, which means more oxygen nutrients will go to the working muscles with the heart not having to work as hard. Now, it's decreased resting heart rate, that just means your heart is going to be healthier. It means it's not having to work as hard throughout the whole day because you've got a decreased heart rate within that. So, decreased risk of hypertension. Now, hypertension is high blood pressure. Okay, it's blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. Now, remember back to responses, our normal blood pressure should be 120 over 80. So, as you can see, this is higher. And this is basically hypertension, high blood pressure. Now, with long-term exercise, we actually get a decreased risk of hypertension. And this occurs mainly because of uh, the blood vessel's ability to vasoconstrict, which is narrow, and vasodilate, which is widen. So we actually become more efficient at doing that. When we vasodilate and they become wider, that reduces the pressure. So with more exercise, and when the blood vessels are able to do this better and more efficiently, it means it's going to reduce our uh, blood pressure. It's also due to an increase in blood plasma. Now, blood plasma is basically the water-based components of blood. So if we've got a more, more kind of water within the blood, the pressure within there is going to be less. Already spoken about the vasodilation, vasoconstriction, and how uh, this transport blood more efficiently. Blood plasma also makes the blood thinner. If the blood is thinner, it means that there's going to be less pressure within the arteries. So the two factors of blood, this blood pressure and vasoconstriction, vasodilation, these mean there's less resistance to blood flow, which decreases our blood pressure. Now this in total means we're at a reduced risk of having a heart attack, heart failure and strokes, especially during exercise. Now you're at greater risk of a heart attack if you are unfit and you are doing physical activity because the heart is having to work really hard, your blood pressure goes up and then all of a sudden you have a heart attack. So that's why it's really important due to long term training that we get these adaptations taking place. So increased vital capacity, this is more to do with the respiratory system now. So vital capacity is the amount of air 
that you can forcibly expel from the lungs. Now, if we have a greater vital capacity, oh, we have a greater ability to force air from the lungs, it actually means we're going to be getting rid of more carbon dioxide per breath out, which means that we're going to have a reduced effect of lactic acid, which means we're going to be able to perform for longer at higher intensities. The reason we can do this is because the muscles that control our breathing become stronger and more efficient, so they take longer to fatigue. So if you think if you think of the muscles around your rib cage, when they become stronger, it means that we can force more air out per breath. So this is going to be good for endurance sports because it means that more oxygen can be delivered to the working muscles when we breathe in and more carbon dioxide can be removed when we breathe out. So we've got here kind of like a swimmer is an example, you've got marathon runner, um, cyclist and the Tour de France would also be a good example for that one. So the muscles that we're talking about are the ones we spoke about for the responses. So you've got the diaphragm, the external intercostal muscles, that really big one, the sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis minor, rectus abdominis, internal intercostal muscles. All of these muscles become stronger, which means that we're able to breathe in more oxygen and we're able to breathe out more carbon dioxide per breath. And that is why an increased vital capacity is really beneficial for a sports performer. So I'm going to leave the screencast there because the next three points I want to go into a bit more detail about so it take a bit longer. So if you just pause it here and um, you can crack on with that work. Cheers. Bye.